Hey, I'm Nick. And I'm Allie. And this is the But Have You Tried Bookshelf. It feels like a million years since we did our last Yeah, why does it feel that way? So much has happened. I don't know. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) Just throws it off. St. Patrick's Day is a week into itself. Allie and I marched in the parade. It was a lot of fun. It was did a lot of fun. fun. It I was, fun. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was freezing cold. It was freezing, freezing cold. cold. I had a cloak, so that helped. <laughs> you did. I, I love that you're the kind of person where you're like, oh, I can wear my cloak for this. Right. You know? I got to have, you know, yeah. reasons to wear it. Yeah. So Wellsville, outside of the Wellsville Brewing Company, does the uh, the world's shortest... I'm using St. air Patrick's quotations. I don't know if it truly is the world's shortest. I don't know. But uh, world's shortest St. Patrick's Day parade. And the library was in it. The teen D&D club was yes. in it representing with their signs. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. So club. much yelling so, of, get in the game. Yeah. We had this sign that said, like, get in the game, read. Yeah. And the two teens that I assigned to hold it were, like, really, really, took it really into that, yeah. you know, into that phrase. Yeah. Do so. you, are, are you, like, a wear green all day on St. Patrick's Day? kind of gal. pretty much yeah okay. like every year on st patrick's day it's like i wake up and i'm like oh you know it's st patrick's day like we can be chill people yeah. don't expect you to wear an entire green outfit you could just like wear a green shirt or yeah. something and then at some point while i'm getting dressed i'm like suddenly wearing green fish you leggings and like a, <laughs> a headband yeah. and like yep. multiple sweaters and green and stuff yeah. this year it was you a little more chill it. on the day of because i went all out for the parade, the parade. same with me same with me, but I did wear green on Good. the actual Good day. For you. Afterwards, we went over to the brewery, and they have this like birch beer. Mm. It's so good. So we got the green That's cups so cool. that the development core was selling. You could buy like a one dollar green cup, and then you could go get something. So uh, my sister tried one of the ales because she's <laughs> see how weird I said it because I'm not a drinker. Ow. The ales. <laughs> uh, she tried one, and then my wife and I got the the birch beer in the green cups, which is good. It's so good. And I, do have they just always it? have the birch beer? They there? do always have the okay, birch beer. Okay, now I have to go. And it get wasn't them. dyed green, but. Mm. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let's talk movies. What have you been watching? Okay. So I have actually watched some movies. Oh. Which. What a twist. I know. I know. Lately it's been like, I just haven't been watching as many of them. And I feel like there's just been like random things in my life that have cropped up at the times when I normally watch a movie that have been preventing me. Okay. But. Okay. Pretending we have a format. Let's save our featured movie for last. So tell me all your hot takes. Okay. 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 So these are my hot takes. Let me have them. So I finally watched the Marvels. Oh. Wait, fi- like for the first time? For the first time. Wow. You claim to be a Ms. Marvel fan. I know. It truly this is, is outrageous. Sad. Well, the movie came out and I was, I forget, when did it even come out? Was it in like July? It was a while ago. It was a long Yikes. time ago. Yeah. Man, I'm feeling guilty just yeah. saying these words. Yeah. So it you're the reason out- it tanked. I what? guess. You're the reason yeah, it tanked. Yeah, I personally. You me individually. <laughs> killed killed I think the it's Marvels. Great. I love I have, it. I can't I wait to hear time. what you think. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I think it came out and it was like a bad time and then it's like the thing of it's like, you know, once it's been out for a while, your motivation to go and see it goes down. And yeah. I hate driving places. Yeah. It's just so much work. So weird. And then you have to wait until it comes out on like, you know, a streaming service it, or something. It has been out on streaming services for quite a while. I have no excuse. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we finally watched it. I had a good time. I was like excited, but a little nervous going into it because yeah. I was like, this is a concept that I really like. Yeah. So I really want them to do a good job yeah and i feel like they did do a good job i thought it was great the yeah. way they're like sw- like the switching with the, the powers switching was and really it was cool. all choreographed in the a really dynamic awesome between way. the three of them was good yeah the baby flurkins spoilers was, was great yeah. i appreciated that a yeah. lot yeah i know i i've got i've got no complaints about that movie the I whole it was scene great. where they're just like singing and he's like welcome back and she's like we are all in danger yeah. and he's she's like trying to it's so good yeah it's so good see i live in a house divided because uh, <laughs> i have always i'm a huge dc fan and my wife's a huge marvel fan she has a marvel podcast she hosts previously on x-men for radio meanwhile and she's also he's a huge captain marvel fan mm. and uh so we went to see the movie and there was a lot writing on it because it's like her favorite character right you know right and we just loved it i mean both of us just like totally loved it and mild spoilers for the tag there's a little x-men content in uh the marvels you looking at me like you don't know what i'm talking about i do about. know what you're talking about okay. it just took a while for all right to get there <laughs> all right it came around so yeah i loved it but my wife who's a captain marvel uh, aficionado also loved it did so. she like the first captain marvel movie she did i think her initial reaction was was like maybe she was expecting something different but mm. like She's rewatched it since, and we rewatched it before then. And it's, I mean, it's great. It's a great movie. Yeah, I really like the first Captain Marvel movie. I feel like yeah. it's a little bit of an odd opener to like her in the MCU. 
you. It is. It like is. the whole she doesn't remember things, I feel like kind of yeah. stunts the character it growth does. a little it bit. It does a little bit. But I still think it's a good movie and I had a good time. Yeah, and I think too when you see the trajectory of everything, like she's such a powerhouse moment when she shows up at Endgame and stuff. Oh, yes. You know, that uh, it, it makes it all great. And Brie Larson is just like perfectly cast. Mm-hmm. I think the whole thing. I think Iman Vellani is great as Ms. Marvel. Uh, it's, yeah, she's perfect, it, honestly. The whole thing, yeah. I'm irritated by the response to the Marvels, especially from people who didn't see it. We're like, oh, it tanked and like nobody liked it. It's like, we're all sick of Marvel movies. It's got yeah. nothing to do with the Marvels. I think that's part of why I didn't watch it yeah. for a while, to be honest, is I was like, oh, man, I'm feeling the Marvel right. burnout. Right. And really, I mean, for it really to land, I feel like you also did have to kind of have seen WandaVision and Ms. Ms. Marvel, Marvel, which you absolutely at least should. Definitely Ms. Marvel. Yeah. But I feel like that was a little at play at that, too. But I just think it's a great movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the better MCU movies. And for a while, at yeah, least. Yeah. For sure. So cool. I'm glad you got it. But that's not your featured movie. That's not my featured movie. Maybe it should Interesting. have been. Interesting. I'm interested to see what oh, it is okay. then. So what else you got for Another hot, hot take. I also watched The Outlaws. Uh, oh. Have you heard of this? I have. I love The In-Laws with, with Michael Douglas and Ryan Reynolds and Lindsay Sloan from The Odd Couple from nice. last time. Nice. A little bit of a callback. And yeah. So I think... The Outlaws is kind of based on that premise, which is itself based on an old Peter Falk movie. So, hmm. did you like it? I did. Okay. I had a good time. That's Adam yeah. Devine? I don't know. I think it is. I recognized okay. I recognized the guy. Okay. I also recognized the girl. She's in a, like a a rom-com called The Perfect Pairing. Okay. About wine in Australia. That's fun. Yeah. It is Adam Adam Devine, Pierce Brosnan, and Ellen Barkin, Nina Dobrev. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was fun and it was very much like a it was Saturday and I was hanging out with some of my friends and we were like, well, we should watch a movie. And we were like, yeah, no one knows what to watch. Mm-hmm. So we were looking on Netflix and we like watched the little cut and we were like, do it. This, this looks good. Do it. Shenanigans. Yeah. I'm always down for a movie with some shenanigans. Okay. So Lacey Mosley, who hosts one of my favorite podcasts, Scam Goddess is also in that movie. Oh, so that's cool. That's another reason for me to watch it. Have yeah. you ever heard of that podcast? No. She just recounts scams, scammers and scams. That's and funny. It's, yeah. It's super fun. It always has a guest on. It's one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, I did a lot of movie watching, so I had to pare it down for you. Uh, I watched Dune Part 2 in theaters. What'd you think? I liked it a lot. Do you care about Dune? I a little bit. I, eh, eh, eh. Maybe. Did you see the first one? No. <laughs> well, because okay. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I should read the book, but also I don't know if I want to read I... the book. It's a whole thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in a state of paralysis yeah. about Dune because I, I don't really want to read the book, but I feel like maybe I should. Yeah. I no, I enjoyed I enjoyed both movies. I think actually I liked the first one better, but my friends that I saw it with, my wife and our friend Sally and Sarah, much preferred Dune too. So hmm. who knows? But Interesting. yeah, great cast, cool story. I feel like Dune's approach to like our hero, ladies and gentlemen, is very different from sci fi of that time because it's kind hmm. of sort of has this thing where it's like if somebody's telling you that they're gonna like save you, they're probably not going to. You know, hmm. if somebody's that like claiming to be the hero. Eh. Maybe not. Eh. So visually great the music's great the cast is great I got, i've got no complaints i'm ready for them to make dune messiah fair enough it's a weird book and they only get weirder from there yeah exciting are you ready for your featured movie i am ready for my featured movie Hit me all right my featured movie is dealt which is a documentary oh about okay. richard turner who is a card magician <laughs> and you must be wondering to yourself why did i watch this and why is it my featured movie? all of those questions came to okay, my mind there's instantly. very good yeah. answers to these questions um, the answer as to why I watched this is that my brother Wes, who is 17, is really into card magic. Okay. And he's quite good at it, honestly. Right. Although I feel bad because it's like everyone in my family is so used to his card magic oh. that he'll do like a really impressive trick and we'll just be like, cool, yeah, nice. That's the thing he yeah. does. Yeah. Right? There and so go. then like other people, I'll see him do tricks for other people and they're like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? And I'm yeah. kind of like, that's yeah, a good when point. You break I it down. That's a yeah. Good, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so he picked this movie that he wanted to watch which is about Richard Turner, who okay. I think considers himself a card mechanic, which basically what he does is like, you know, if you're playing a game of cards, he like can totally perfectly stack the deck to make oh. it do exactly what he wants. Okay. And so it's all like false shuffling and like sneaky. I, I think that's called cheating. Well, I mean, he doesn't do it in actual games. He does it like to show people. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Actually, from what I understand, some like mob boss people have like reached out to him and tried to get him to like set games for them. Ooh. And he's been like, no. He's not going to do it. But I feel okay. like that would be Good a little bit of a scary space to be in. But anyway, I think so. the movie was really interesting, especially because you discover partway through the movie he's actually totally blind. Oh. 
and like he he was legally blind as I a have kid so and he's gradually more lost. Now, so. Right. He also has like a black belt. He he like okay. got a black belt. Anyway, okay. it's a whole thing. Wow. So the movie was very interesting and I thought it was really well done and it answered so many questions that I didn't know I had. Huh. And so that's why it's my pick. How did you watch this film? I believe we got a DVD from the library. Old school. Yeah. I like it. I like it. No commercials though. No commercials. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm currently watching Agent Carter, as you might remember. I do remember. And uh, my wife and I are watching it together. And I checked it out from the library because I was like, I don't have time for all these Disney Plus commercials. So I'm just watching the DVD and it's smooth sailing, baby. (laughs) Woo! There is something nice about that. And I feel like lately more and more streaming services have been like, you know what? We didn't used to do commercials, but now we're we're going to. We watched L.A. Confidential, which is like a serious noir movie. And we're in like the last 30 minutes of it. It's this like huge shootout or something and it's like oh don dish soap brought to you by i'm like oh my gosh really ruined the momentum of it so yeah that's fair i learned my lesson mrs Maisel is on amazon prime and yeah. it never used to have ads, yeah that's a new thing but now yeah. it does and i'm like what are what, like no, thank <laughs> you no thank you I like if like i'm paying it. for amazon prime why are you doing this to me okay Anyway. So your featured movie was an in-depth documentary about a, a card man. Correct. Mine is about a kung fu panda. <laughs> a little <laughs> a little lovable kung fu panda. Uh, what is your history with the kung fu panda, Allie? Um, minimal, but I've seen okay. the first kung fu panda. Okay. Well, I, the first one I feel like was unavoidable. It was one that like everybody was talking about, and it was like so in your face everywhere. Uh, I saw it. My wife and I saw it in theaters when it happened. Loved it hilarious thought it was great no notes uh, no and then i don't think we ever saw the second one and then i remember taking my son to see the third one and he was a little baby uh, so he didn't remember it my wife had never seen it but kung fu panda 4 is out and it coincided with my sister's visit and ah. i was like that would be a fun outing for all of us let's go see kung fu panda and so leading up to it my wife son and i started kung fu panda 1 and then we were like well let's just watch the second oh one my gosh. and then i just started rolling the oh third one and we watched all of them in that's one day that's so much it was a lot that's a lot of it kung was a fu lot panda. jack black is a lot even in small doses so <laughs> a true. lot of jack black is a lot a of lot. jack black but no i feel like my rundown would be the first one good not as funny as i remember two three pretty good and four i really liked wow that was a really helpful yeah. rundown. Thank you. They managed to do something different with it. Like the the early one, it's like Poe is unsure. Like he's sort of, the he's chosen as a dragon warrior almost by accident. And the others don't really trust him. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of grows into it. Um, and you have the, the Furious Five, which are the other warriors. This was just Poe and a new character who was voiced by Aquafina. So right away... You know, you, you, you've elevated the material. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronnie Chang did from The Daily Show did a voice in there. So just a really cool story. My sister did fall asleep for part oh, no. of it, but I think it was just travel weary. I don't, you know. That's what we'll say anyway. But yeah, so I guess my featured movie would be all of all of the Kung Fu Pandas all franchise. Of them in but one. I think four is a good time. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yes. I do think you kind of need to have at least seen the first one for it to really pay off. Okay. But maybe second and callbacks. third you can skip. Maybe, but thir- three's so good, so oh. I don't know. Can you skip two and go to three? I think you could skip okay, two okay. and go to three. This is, no this problem. is useful information. Do you see, are you and Caleb ever going to sit down and watch the Kung Fu Panda films? Maybe. I feel like he really likes the first one. Yeah. I have that it's in my good. brain for some reason. Yeah. So maybe we will. Okay. I don't know if he's seen the second or third. Okay. Now, I've jumped to my feature movie, but there was another one I want to tell you about. Okay, okay. What, if anything, do you know about Mystery Science Theater 3000? Is that a thing in your life? Uh, it's a familiar name. Okay, you don't know what it is. Not really. Okay. Well, it used to be a show where they would take a movie and just like an old B movie and just riff on it the whole time. Like just, you know, make fun of it and like joke. And and it was like a host, either Mike or Joel, and then two robots, Crow and Tom Servo. And you would just see their silhouettes watching the movie, commenting on what's going on mm-hmm. the whole time. So that was a whole thing. And then when that was over, they kind of split and some of them did a project called Film Crew, which was a similar thing. And another group did a Cinematic Titanic, similar thing. And then uh, the three mains from the later years did Rift Tracks, which is still going. But there's a new one in the last couple of years called The Mads Are Back. And it's two of the characters from the original Mystery Science Theater. And they every month they riff on a B-movie and you can like either pay to watch a live stream or you can buy one and watch it later. So we did this for the first time, one called The Devil's Hand. Hmm. And it was about this creepy cult that uses like basically American girl dolls to like 
control people and it was very funny. funny it was really funny i mean dolls are terrifying they are i'm not gonna lie yeah. american girl dolls aren't too bad but the like the precursor yeah. like kind of what american girl dolls yeah. grew from i feel like terrifying yeah terrifying for sure sometimes these rift movies like the movie's just so bad that not the jokes can't sustain it but i felt like this one was actually pretty good and i was like I like that they're doing it monthly because that seems doable, you right. know, rather yeah. than like a weekly thing or something. A weekly so, thing is a lot. Yeah, we might try to hop on board. The Mads are back is what the nice. sort of the show is called. So, yeah, I had a good time. Uh, let's talk TV. What are you watching? I've actually watched some new TV wow. shows. Wow. I you know. What do you got? Is, this is growth for me. I don't know which of these I want to be my favorite because I like I only have a lot I of pressure. Two, it is a lot of pressure. So I have to pick one. Okay, I've picked one in my mind. Okay. <laughs> One of the shows that I have started watching lately is Avatar The Last Airbender, which is one that everyone oh. I know has told me that I should Wait, watch like for the, a zillion years. the original? The old cartoon? Yes. You seem uncertain. When I asked you that I, question, I am was, certain. there was fear in your eyes, but it is the original, the <laughs> old cartoon. Correct. Not, okay. not the live action. Okay. All Correct. Right. And? So far, so good. Okay. Yeah. I'm having right. a good time. I understand a lot of memes now. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this when it was on. My sister-in-law was like a zealot for this show. And she was like, you have to watch it. It's so good. Um, to the point that it was annoying. So it took me some time to actually sit down and watch it. I but, understand. Um, Once someone is like annoying you about something, it's yeah, really hard to actually do it. dig my heels in and be like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to watch it. I did that with the Hunger Games series yeah. for a really long time. Oh, okay. All right. The books are so good. I know. But yeah. I, I didn't want to read I them get because it. everyone was harping I get it. on them. So yeah, I watched the original I watched most of Legend of Korra. We saw the live action M. Night Shyamalan movie, which is bad, but there's a Riff Tracks version of it where they just like riff on it the whole time, and nice. that's a lot of fun. Uh, and I haven't seen the new show. I don't really know that I need to watch that show again. Fair you know? enough. Like, mm -hmm. I liked it. I don't know that I want to watch it in live action. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about a lot of live action So remakes. why, after all these years, are you like, I'm going to watch this cartoon? Well, maybe? I've kind of been meaning to for a long time, but then Caleb was like... Well, basically, he decided he was out of movie picks, and then he wanted to use his movie pick to have us watch a few episodes of okay. this show. So we've been watching a few episodes of this show, and I feel like eventually, had it not been for Caleb, I probably would have watched it, but the reason I am watching it now is because Caleb was like, it's time. Okay. We're watching this. He's so, made a decision. Yeah. Okay. That's what's All happening. Right. Fair enough. Um, I got a few things on the list. One... Uh, I started watching the Hindi version of The Office on... The Hindi version? <laughs> on Hulu. Yes. Were you a fan of The Office? Uh, I've seen the, a few episodes. The British or the, the American? Do you know which... I know the difference, but I I, I've seen a few episodes of The American okay. <laughs> show. Well, I watched both of them, all of them. Um, and I particularly love the American one. And this was just on Hulu. And I was like, let's do it. So I watched a couple and it's it's pretty enjoyable. They are pretty close to the American version. And some of them are really like culturally specific jokes that I don't get, but okay. it's just sort of like fun. You know, I just like, I've, I've been enjoying that. So, uh, I like That's that. That's definitely a niche pick, but I, I'm I glad to hear it. My feature pick is the Buccaneers and it's on Apple and it's based on the Edith Wharton book. And I think hmm. you absolutely should watch it. I feel like there's so many things on Apple that I want to watch. Yeah. So it's at some point favorite. I have it's to get current, it. Like I hate to like shill for a corporation, but I do really <laughs> enjoy uh, the Apple shows, like the morning show, like lots of stuff on there. I'm, I'm really enjoying. But the Buccaneers, uh, it's set, I don't know, late 1800s. And it's about a group of American, basically like socialites, you know, who mm -hmm. are going over to London to, because their parents are trying to be like, you know, why don't you go marry a lord or something? And so it's sort of like a culture clash. And it's it's the kind of show where it's like, I feel like my wife and I are like gasping every few scenes where like something will come up and we'll be like, oh, that's going to complicate things a lot. Oh my gosh. But not to the point where it's like annoying or feels melodramatic. Because sometimes it can. Yeah. It's just these subtle little things and it's like, but if that, then that, then that, then that. So that has been our like hot show of the moment where we're like, let's watch another one of the Buccaneers. That does sound fun. Have you read any Edith Wharton? I don't think I have. Loser. No, I'm just <laughs> no, I know. No, I haven't either. I just figured. Unacceptable. You probably. You know, I know. It does seem like something that I would have read, doesn't it? A little it? young Allie in third grade curling up with an Edith Wharton novel. See, I feel like Edith Wharton was a little too mainstream oh, for third grade Allie. Third grade okay. Allie was like, let's find a book in okay. the Willard J. Houghton library that's uh -huh. never been checked out and uh -huh. read that one. And okay. Edith Wharton has been checked out, so yeah, <laughs> it wasn't I, that. I would think she has. Okay. All right. So anyway, The Buccaneers is my featured pick. Um... We're in a library, so should we talk about some books? Sure. I mean, we have lots of things. It's not just books. I know, okay. but 
books are like the yeah the, the mascot it's the bread and butter it's yeah. the mascot that's a good right yeah other well, than david he's we'll he's our always, individual mascot yes david of course is our is our actual mascot um what do you got tell me about some of the stuff okay so i finished a few things Ferdelance by Rex Stout. Okay. This is the first in the Nero Wolf mysteries. Yeah, okay. I was like, I know that name. Which someone like a million years ago mentioned the series to me and I was like, that sounds really intriguing. Yeah. And then I totally forgot the name of it for like, yeah. you know, five to seven years. And then for some reason recently I like stumbled across it. Maybe it was on the picks list or something. And oh, I was like, wait yeah, yeah. a second. Okay. And I was like, yeah, that sounds intriguing and I like a good mystery. So I'll read that. It was pretty good. Okay. It was a little... It was a little odd, but it was pretty good. When I was a kid, A and E, I think it was A and E, had a Nero Wolf show, and oh, yeah? they ran the commercials for it all the time. So that's like what I think of when I hear it. Um, I read an eighty seventh precinct book by Ed McBain. This is another like long running series. This is from the fifties. When is Rex Stout writing? I have no idea. Oh my gosh! Uh, but I liked mine too. It's eighty seven precinct has like I don't know. Uh, I think the last one was. Maybe 10 years ago, but it was consistent, like, from the 50s. So, uh, yeah, it was it was decent. But, but um, yeah, I guess we're both uh, reading old school detective things. There's just something fun about old school detective yeah. things. Oh, it looks like Rex Stout. Uh, looks like that series maybe started in the 30s. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you're going back even farther. I'm even more hardcore than you so are. What, what is the book that you said you read? Fur de Lance. Oh, yeah. Which is like... 1934. A snake? Older than this building. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. This building is old. Did you get a copy here and was it older than this building? Um, I listened to the audiobook. Okay. Because I don't know if we have a copy of the first one Okay. Here, but I we have know. a copy of a lot of them. Cool. And there's a plug for Libby also. If you're not using Libby, folks. It's the best. You gotta I, do it. I love it. I use yeah. it constantly, honestly. Yeah. If you don't know how to use Libby, let us know and we'll help you because it's great. Audiobooks, we will be e-books, delighted magazines. to help you. We would be delighted. Honestly, yeah. I, like I feel like if someone comes in and is like, hey, can you help me set up Libby? It's yeah. like the highlight of my day. I'm like, yeah. I'm so ready to yeah. set Libby up for you. I'm the and same open way. open your world. And if you're listening to Libby and you don't know that we have partnerships with the Owl Library System and the Finger Lakes Library System, just go and add those two libraries and sign in with your card through us and then you triple your access. I know. It's incredible. It's a great deal. A great day for me it's, when it, that happens. It really... <laughs> It really was special. Okay, so Rex Stout. Um, you know, we did read Across America Day. Where oh, we, we had did. To go I almost forgot about that. So much has happened. St. Patrick's Day. We didn't have to go. We chose to go. We chose to go. We read volunteered. to the elementary school. I read to fourth grade. And I read a book, the first couple of chapters, first five or so chapters of a book called Wildfire by Philbrick Rodman. This is a, in our junior collection, our junior adventure collection. Mm, very good. And it's about kids being evacuated from a summer camp in Maine when a wildfire breaks out. That sounds really and this stressful. One kid wants to tell his mom what's happening, but he forgot his phone, so he runs back to the cabin mm. and they don't see him leave, and oh, so no. now he's stuck. And it's a good I read the whole thing myself to you know to make sure that it was cool. Mm-hmm. And it was. And it's pretty the whole time, like you kind of keep up the tension and you keep up the adventure. It reminded me of Hatchet a little bit. Right. Yeah, it sounds like similar a similar age mm-hmm. and vibe. But they were on the edge of their seats, fourth grade. Oh, my gosh. They were like, I was like, all right, I'm going to switch to something else. And they were like, no, just read one more. So I felt like that was nice. That's I definitely felt like a that success. Was quite a success. My sister and I were going to read The Timekeeper by Mitch Album together. Uh, and I read it and she did not finish it. But I supported that decision because it was a weird book. Fair enough. His books are usually pretty straightforward. But this was about somebody who was like turned into Father Time. And oh my it was gosh. like, it was so weird. I don't recommend that it. That does sound but weird. But it is worth mentioning. Um, what else you got for books? Okay. So a couple things I'm currently reading. Okay. My pick is one that I have finished. Um, I'm currently reading A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This Why do I know that? Uh, they're making a show of it oh, or maybe that's a movie. It. Okay. They're making some sort of film adaptation of it. And uh, it's one that we have in the collection. There's a couple books in the series. It's like a YA murder mystery okay and i love a good murder mystery and i've been meaning to read this one for a while and then i i saw they were making a film adaptation and i was like well i definitely yeah. need to read the book first you gotta jump on it and i also remembered that you said that you weaponize book clubs to stay in touch with your friends yeah i do so i made a bunch of my friends do this yes. as a book club with me yes i'm super good. pumped so good. yeah learn Which, from my deceptive ways right <laughs> We set it up as like a reading schedule, though. So we're only oh. supposed to read six chapters a week. Oh. Unless we all like are like, okay, we clearly need to read more. Okay. But I finished my six chapters for the week already. And I desperately want to read mm. more. But I really need to restrain myself. Okay. That's a tough place to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, ours is monthly. 
and we're currently reading uh, just a generic sci-fi, and it was my pick, and it's one called The Arrest. It's by Jonathan Latham, and you're really just kind of thrown into it, and it's sort of a, I guess I would say post-apocalyptic. Something has happened, and the world is, you know, like little communities are cut off. There's no electricity. It's Everything's kind of going back, oh, man. and it sort of centers on... Um, This place that had a bit of a commune vibe, and now it's become this huge thing. So, really cool. It's written by the same author who wrote the book Motherless Brooklyn, which was made into a movie with um, Ed Norton and Bruce Willis. The movie's great, so now I want to go back and read that book, too. But that is our current uh, friendship hijacking book club that we're doing. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I also finished God Emperor of Dune. My friend Sarah Jacoby Murphy. Uh, There's another one. There's another one. Mm Mm-hmm weaponizing book clubs uh we read this one together and it is crazy oh yeah it is full crazy pants with worms so yeah it's uh it's i like re-watching this like part two of the movie i was like how how from where this movie is at do we get to god emperor of dune because it's just in its own league so i'm not gonna say anything more about it things will just really crazy go crazy as they go on okay let me hear your pick okay my pick is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy oh, by John Le Carre. Yeah. Have you read ri- this one? I haven't. Uh, it's one of the Richard Smiley books, right? I don't know what his name is, but it's definitely Smiley. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't Richard. know if they ever say his first name. I feel like it's Richard. Maybe I'm I feel like they up. say it at some point, but they always just call him Smiley. Yes. I saw the movie with Gary Oldman and I have the book and I intended to read the book, but that's not book one. That's not the first of the Smiley books. Yeah. And there's like some other ones that come through. Threw first. me off. I was like, oh, I can't read Tinker Tailor if I haven't read the others. And so From I what I never... understand, it is acceptable to read Tinker Tailor oh, if it you is. haven't read the okay. others. Well, because it's like, if you look online at like the series breakdown, it's okay. like there's a bigger overarching series that follows Smiley, but then there's like kind of a... George. A smaller George series. Okay. That Tinker Tailor kicks that one off. Okay. So I was like, I feel justified in reading this one. And I wanted to read it because I had seen the movie when I was a kid. At some point, my dad wanted a to kid. watch it. A kid. Okay. All right. I don't know. I it's, might have been like intense. 11. I okay. wasn't that small of a kid. Okay. Well, and it was the old movie, so it wasn't oh, that oh, intense. Oh. Okay. All right. And I was like, this is really cool. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, I feel like I need some espionage in my life. Yeah. And so I read it. Yeah, and now I, I want to read the newer. Or see I the do. Movie. I think I have the spy who came in from the cold on my shelf over here. I've always wanted to read a John Le Carre, and I just haven't. So you've surpassed me. Thank you. Thank so. you. But I did beat you with that Agatha Christie series. Yeah, that's true. So did you? You ever, had a head start. Uh, by about twenty years. Did you finish Tommy and Tuppence ever? Did you? I have not. I decided that since you already beat me, I would like uh, savor them a little bit. Okay. So all right, that's what I'm doing. That's acceptable. Um, mine is, and this is going to surprise you, but it is a Star Trek book. Oh, man. <laughs> it, is, it is Somewhere to Belong by Dayton Ward. It's the most recent of the Star Trek Discovery books. And, you know, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with Discovery, but the final season is coming back uh, in the next couple of weeks at time of recording. So I wanted to kind of, like, touch base with the characters again because, like a lot of modern shows, the last season of that was, like, eons ago. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to kind of, like, get back in the world, but I don't want to rewatch any of it, so... I read the book and I was pleasantly surprised. It kind of pulled from a uh, season two episode that I really liked and, and kind of extrapolated with those characters. And I, yeah, I thought it was a good use of character and kind of got me back in the zone for like, yeah, let's watch this final season of Discovery. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You reading any comic books? Um, I am about to start reading Captain Carter. Oh, yeah. Because I need something to read while I'm waiting to read six more chapters of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I've been meaning to read this one, but I was like, I got to finish Tinker Tailor. So it's the perfect time for Captain Carter. And it's thematic with our upcoming podcast episode. Yeah, true. That's true. I have been reading a lot of X-Men in comic books. I got to a point where they split into like X-Men Blue, X-Men Gold, and like Old Man Logan. And there's a bunch of X-Men comics like at the same time. And so I'm sort of trying to find a reading order where I'm reading the story in the right way. So It can be hard to figure that out with comic books yes. sometimes. Yes, it can. That is my main complaint yes, about comic books. Overall, can. love them, but reading okay. order can be confusing. Yeah, yeah. What about just anything else in your life? I feel like I've told you all my things. My sister visited. We were in a parade. Kung yeah. Fu Panda, you know. That's all the what, important things. What about you? What are you guys up to? <laughs> well, Caleb and I just went to a High Kings concert okay. on Tuesday. All right. Which was like two days ago as okay. of, this, of this recording. I'm trying to remember if you've told me what that is and I've forgotten or if I've never known what that Fair is. Fair enough. It's an Irish band. I would have guessed that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Sea shanties? Were there sea shanties? Uh, there were not 
well, there was one that was sea shanty. It's a fine shanty line, right? You there just is. Have, you just have to it turn. kind of yeah. blurs. Yeah. But the High Kings is a band that I've liked since like before I was old enough to like bands. Oh. My dad had like their first CD, and I okay. would play it over and over and over again. <laughs> And so I saw at some point that they were coming to Ithaca and I was like, hey, I love the High Kings and I love Ithaca. Right. Yeah. So we went. It was very good. There was another band, Gaelic Storm, that played before them yeah. that I hadn't heard before, but I also thought they also were good. good. Also okay. Irish music. I also yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. But the High Kings were very, very good. Okay. It was truly incredible to see them live. Very energetic. And the audience was so into it that they came out for an encore and played like 15 or 20 minutes more oh, of songs. Wow. It was fantastic. That's an extensive, that's like a it whole, was an extensive that's like encore. A new show. Yeah, and like both the bands played together for that, which was kind of cool yeah. to see. Yeah. But we got home at like 1.30 in the morning. So. That's cool. Speaking of Irish music, we have to plug. We've got Stone Circle, an Irish band that's coming here on March 29th. Seven o'clock. It's a Friday. So if you're local, come to that. I want to go because I love Irish music. Yeah. Uh, did you do anything else in Ithaca? Did you go out to eat or anything cool We like didn't. That? We, we were really tired. Okay. <laughs> and so we were like, eh, we'll just go for the concert. Wow. And we'll go back. That's a, I don't want to say it's a waste, but it's kind of a waste. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. But All right. it was cool to see the theater too, because I'd never been in there before. And like the ceiling has like, it's like blue and it's got constellations painted on it. Oh. And I don't know if there's like glass or something like set in where the stars would oh, be. Oh, wow. It kind of reflects. It's That's really cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited about the eclipse? I am excited about the eclipse. That's good. I'm like nervous that something is going to happen to prevent me from seeing it. Like it'll be cloudy or something. Like you'll be trapped in an elevator. <laughs> yes. Something like that. I'm like, something's going to happen. Uh, okay. I can just feel it. Okay. Well, that's a, that's an anxiety I don't have. So well, that's good. I'm happy you for you. <laughs> the best of luck with that. Okay. Well, in two weeks, we're going to be back here talking about Asian Carter. Um, I am f- I'm halfway. I've watched the first four episodes nice. of season one. So... I will do it by the time this, uh, this episode airs. So if you want to watch along with it, it's on Disney Plus, or you can put a hold on it. When I'm done with it, you could check out the digital video discs. Absolutely. Right here at the David A. Howe Public Library. Okay, remember you can follow us on all sorts of social medias and go and write a little review and rate and tell all of your friends about it. Absolutely. Okay. All of your friends need to hear us. <laughs> they do. Uh, you know what? You could you could do like a listening party, like how we use yes. book clubs. You to can weaponize our, our podcast. That's right. To stay in touch with you your friends. Come, you could listen to it. Yeah. Shout out to Emily, who's on the board here and is a regular listener. Hi, Emily. Thanks Hi, Emily. for listening. <laughs> okay. So two weeks, Agent Carter. I'll see you then. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.